Yum, yum! Hey, this is Ed Ferrari, and in this video, I'd like to demonstrate how we can create a truche tile pattern in Modo. Uh, the setup is pretty simple and straightforward, uh, but this is a great way to get uh, a lot of variety, almost infinite variety, uh, in a seamless tiling uh, geometry. Uh, we can also take this geometry and bake it into uh, an image map or texture uh, that will also tile. Uh, and we'll, we'll explore that as well. Uh, so we have a replicator here, and it's being fed a, a prototype uh, mesh item, which we'll look at in a second. But the really interesting part about this uh, truche tiling pattern is if we take the replicator and we adjust the seed, uh, we can get a totally different uh, pattern uh, using the same prototype element, um, but no matter what, it will tile. Um, because if you keep an eye here on the open areas, like the open ends of these tubes, no matter how many times I change the seed, even though the inside changes and the geometry changes, the open boundaries are always the same. And that's because uh, a truche tiling pattern is rotationally symmetric. So the prototype geometry that we're using, which we'll have a look at uh, right now, let me just hide my uh, merge meshes mesh up and detach my prototype. Uh, this is my simple prototype geometry, and as you can see, uh, it has some open ends. Uh, and if I turn on this reference square, which serves no purpose other than for uh, my own kind of... Um, this is just to help me visually align my prototype pieces. Um, you can see that each of these open boundaries here on our prototype geometry, which looks like uh, elbow macaroni, uh, the open boundaries are kind of perfectly uh, centered on uh, the vertex of this underlying reference square. Uh, and that's, that's what I mean by uh, rotational, uh, rotationally symmetric. So that if I take this prototype geometry and press E for rotate, and uh, holding control, I'll just rotate this 90 degrees, uh, you can see that the open boundaries are still centered on the middle of the square on each side. And again, it doesn't matter if I rotate this again another 90 degrees to give us uh, 180 degrees or 270 degrees or 360 degrees. Those open boundaries are always on the middle of that um, alignment square. And this square uh, corresponds to uh, the plane that we have. Um, so here's the plane. Uh, each of these squares or parts of the grid uh, on the plane are the exact same size as that reference square. So that when we replicate it, and when we replicate this pattern piece, uh, the pieces all um, connect together seamlessly. So we also have a particle modifier here, and this is doing one very simple thing. Uh, I just have the source mode set to polygons. By default, it's vertices, uh, because we just want the, uh, the prototype to be at the center of uh, the plane. So I'll show this when we build this from scratch, uh, because it's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, so if I take the 10 by 10 plane uh, away, I delink that so that it's no longer the particle source, and I replace it with a 40 by 40 grid. You can see uh, everything still holds up. Uh, this is still tiling geometrically, and if we bake this, it'll still tile uh, as a 2D image. Uh, and also, if I come over to the replicator and change the seed, we'll still get a different uh, pattern. And we can, we can adjust this as much as we want, so I'll change the seed again and we get a different pattern. And the open boundaries are always in the same place, which is what allows it to be uh, tileable. So I'll just replace the 40 by 40 plane with the 10 by 10 plane, uh, just to make things a little bit more snappy. And if I detach this, uh, this part here, uh, this prototype, and we have a look at some other prototypes that we could use, uh, we'll take a look at this mix pattern, which is very similar. It's, a, it's also like a tube, but this is a little bit more square, so we'll hook that up real quick. And that gives us a similar effect. And again, the replicator, uh, just by changing the seed, we get a totally different uh, pattern. Uh, but we also have this other pattern here. And this looks like two M's. And again, it's rotationally symmetrical. So if I rotate this 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or any um, anything like that, uh, it'll it'll still work. But if I hook this up, we can have a look at what that will do. 
Okay, so that's the effect that we get there. Uh, now these mix together as long as the um, the open boundaries uh, match up, as long as they're geometrically similar. So you can see here, uh, they both have the same kind of opening. Uh, they're overlapping, but they have the same opening. So that if I, that looks like I accidentally parented one to the other. There we go. Just hide that. Uh, so if I plug them both in as a prototype, uh, it will mix together in an interesting way and give us a completely new pattern. Uh, so that's also pretty powerful. And uh, this will work with any uh, variation of the 10x10, 10 10, 20 20x20, 40x40 grid, as long as the uh, segments in the grid are all uh, square. So if I come over to the replicator and change the seed for this, uh, it'll still work. We'll still get... Uh, you know, an infinite or nearly infinite amount of uh, variety here. And this can be baked. So other than the uh, the openings on the, uh, the prototype piece uh, kind of being aligned perfectly to that, uh, to the middle of that square, that's kind of the first key aspect of this. Uh, the second important bit is uh, a part of the replicator uh, item, which is the random 90 degree Y rotation. Uh, if I turn that off and then I use this uh, arrow geometry, uh, which is facing X positive, if I use this as the prototype geometry, uh, you can see all of the arrows are facing uh, the same direction. But if I take the replicator and I enable that random 90 degree Y rotation, uh, now we're getting uh, that uh, variety. Uh, and if I change the seed for this, all the arrows uh, will change directions randomly. So that's kind of the other key aspect. Um, so let's build this from scratch. So I'll press Control N to start a new mesh item. Or I'm sorry, a new, a new scene. And then in this empty mesh, I'll just uh, create a, a plane. And I'm just going to make sure this plane is Let's see, it's one meter by one meter. I'm just going to change the absolute size to 1.25 uh, meters. And I'll click uniform scale. And then I'll subdivide this a, a few times. So I'll just use the uh, Alt-C for loop slice and I'll just give it nine, uh, a count of nine, which gives us, that should be 10 segments. So let's take a look. Yep, 10 polygons there. I'll just take this uh, vertical uh, edge and I'll do the same. So I gave that uh, nine segments. So now we just recreated our 10 by 10 uh, plane. And I'll just take one of these and control C to copy. And we'll just name that plane in the empty mesh item, control V to paste. And I'll just center this by going to edit, center all, and then shift D uh, to subdivide the polygons and we'll use faceted as our subdivision method. Okay, so that is our uh, reference square. There we go, reference square. I'll press N for new mesh item, and I'll just call this elbow, this empty mesh item. And we're just going to create a procedural toroid um, just to act as our, our elbow piece. Uh, so I'll open up the mesh operations stack and I'll add an operator and I'll add a procedural torus or a toroid. Okay, so that came in pretty big. Uh, in the toroid properties, I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. Our position will be negative 62.5 millimeters in the X and the Z position will be also negative 65.2 millimeters. Uh, the radius will be 31.25 millimeters, and that's going to be uh, the radius for the X, Y, and Z. So while I'm still active in this input field, I'll hold Control Shift Alt and press Enter. So that looks good. Our ring radius will be uh, 62.5 millimeters, and our cross section will be 12 millimeters by 12 millimeters. And we'll change the sides to 32 and the segments to 16 just to increase that. And I think everything else is good. And we only really need uh, the area of this torus that's uh, kind of over overlapping or intersecting with that reference square. So I'm just going to uh, right click on this procedural uh, mesh item 
and choose freeze mesh operations freeze because we no longer need this to be um, uh, procedural. So I'll middle mouse button lasso select on the part of the torus that we're going to keep. Open square bracket to select the inverse. Control X to cut that away. Uh, now I could leave this as is, but I think I'm going to flatten this because we can always uh, thicken this procedurally. So I think that's I think we're going to thicken this procedurally uh, at the end. So let me just select these two uh, polygons. L for loop. Control X. I'll do the same on this side. Two polygons. L for loop. Control X. And then I'll just double click on these polygons at the bottom to get rid of those. I'll select all of these polygons, R for scale, Alt W to go into the origin action center, and I'll just uh, scale the Y to zero. I can turn off my reference square, and I can hit escape a few times to get rid of my dimension tool. And then I can select these, L for loop, Control X, and that's looking pretty good. Okay, so let me turn on my reference square again. And it looks like something something went a little bit wrong. Uh, this should not be overlapping. So let me undo that a few times and see what happened. It must be from the procedural torus. So that's why we had that reference square there, just to uh, to check that out, to kind of keep ourselves uh, to keep everything working. And it looks like here in the position. Z, I have 65.2 millimeters. I really need that to be 62.5. So it's a good thing we caught that. There we go. Now I think everything is good. Let's just do that again. We'll freeze this. Go to a top view. Press escape a few times to get rid of our dimension tool. Select these polygons. Open square bracket to select the inverse. Control X to cut. Go back to perspective view. And select these. These polygons, L for loop, control X, double click that, delete it. R for scale, Alt W for origin. Move those down. Now everything looks aligned with our reference square. I'll select this edge, shift right click this edge to select in between, L for loop, control X to cut that away. And one more time, just for a sanity check, we'll look at our reference square and everything looks good. So now we need to uh, rotate this uh, 180 degrees. So our origin is already set to, uh, our ac action center is set to origin, I should say. So uh, E for rotate, uh, Control C to copy these polygons, H to hide, and Control V to paste into the uh, same spot that the hidden polygons are in. And then holding Control, we'll just rotate this 180 degrees and press U to unhide. And again, we'll check our reference square and everything looks good. All right, so now we're ready to move on into the uh, into the schematic. So I'll drag my elbow geometry here into the schematic. Uh, we can leave our reference square out of here and then I'll just take my plane and move that into the schematic as well because the plane is going to be our uh, particle source. So then I'll come over to uh, add and I'll type replicator. We'll add that and I'll hide the reference square. So if I take the plane output and plug that into the particle source and then plug the elbow into the prototype, uh, you can see this is the effect that we're getting. We're getting some uh, pretty even uh, squiggly lines. I can just hide the elbow prototype. And that's okay, but if I enable the plane, uh, you can see these, uh, the replicator is actually using uh, the verts as uh, the point at which it's uh, replicating, and we want it to be the polygons. Uh, so we're going to select this wire in between the uh, particle source uh, input, which is the plane, and the actual replicator, and we'll add a particle uh, modifier. A particle modifier, here we go. And because we had that wire selected, it wires it up uh, correctly. I'll select that particle modifier, and the source mode, we're gonna change that from vertices to polygons and I'll hide that plane. So now we're really getting what we were after. And now if I take the replicator and I turn on random 90 degree Y rotations, you can see we're getting that nice truche tiling pattern effect. Um, so if I change the seed, now we're really getting uh, the results we were after. So that's working perfectly. Now if I uh, duplicate the elbow piece, and I'll call this 
uh, elbow angle. Uh, it's automatically hooked up. I'll just delink it. I'll actually do delink both, and we'll have a look at this elbow angle. And let's delete one of these because we'll just do a quick variation. So let's try deleting these, and then Alt C with a count of one. Alt C just gives us a loop, and then I'll select this inner loop. Alt C again. This time we'll change the mode to symmetry with a count of two. And we'll just run this to here. And let's see if that is still in or within the bounds of the reference square. And it looks like it is. So we should be good to go. I'll just add one more loop slice here in the center with uh, the mode set to uniform and a count of one. I'll select these polygons. We still have our uh, action center set to origin. So uh, control C. H to hide the polygons, control V to paste the polygons over the hidden polygons, E for rotate, holding control, we'll just rotate this 180 degrees, and then U for uh, unhiding. And now let's try to hook this elbow angle up into the prototype, and we'll hide the original. And if I come over to elbow angle and I press shift tab to go into count clock mode, you can see we're getting a pretty cool result. It almost looks like a hedge maze pattern. And if I change the seed, it's working perfectly. So let's uh, let's actually use this as uh, what we're going to use for uh, baking. So all I need to do is delink this and give it some thickness. So I think I'll just stick one and then copy it. So come over here to the polygon side tab, thicken right click, I have both sides enabled, and I'll just do about 15 millimeters. I'm gonna temporarily turn off Catmull Clark mode so I can just delete these pieces. Um, I'm deleting these because I need the open, uh, the open ends, otherwise it won't uh, fuse together. We won't, uh, we won't have welded geometry. Um, and also, the ends of the truchet pattern will have this slight rounding, and that will mess up the uh, the tiling. And we want this to tile, so I'll delete those. And let me just add a little bit more geometry. So here, actually I can just select this, Alt C, set the symmetry with a count of two, and I'll just bring that down to, let's do four or five. And I'll do the same thing for the other side, Alt C, with a count of five. So now in Catmull Clark mode, that looks pretty good. So from a top view, control C, H to hide the existing geometry, control V to paste over the hidden geometry, E for rotate with an origin action center, holding control, we'll rotate this 180 degrees, U to unhide, and let's just turn on that square just to make sure we're still good. Having that square really helps uh, to troubleshoot this. So now if I drag that elbow into the prototype and then hide the prototype, you can see this is the result that we have, and that's pretty good. Now if I want to, I could I could make a larger plane, and I'm contemplating that right now. Let's make a larger plane really quickly. So I'll duplicate this plane, and I'll call this plane large. And I'm just going to quickly Turn off that replicator. Uh, we'll just do this procedurally. So in the plain large mesh item, I'll add an operator. We'll just do an array. And right now you can see the array is kind of overlapping, and that's because our initial uh, plane is 100 or 1.25 meters. So I have to go to the array generator, and I have to change the offset to 1.25 meters by 1.25 meters. Uh, and then I'll just uh, freeze this mesh operation. And we will, oh, okay, so we're not vert welded. I'll just select all of these verts, go over to the vert side tab, merge, range set to automatic. And now this is all uh, vert welded. So I'll go to edit, center all, and then I'll take this uh, plain large. It was connected automatically, but with this plain large mesh item, set to the particle source. 
uh, I'll turn on that replicator and that's the result we're getting. So here's the elbow angle you can see right there and then here is the standard elbow right there and again we can thicken this as well if we really wanted to. Um, we might actually want to bring this into a merge meshes mesh up uh, like we did previously. Let me just take the extra time and thicken this as well. I think this is I think this will be worth it. So if I take these, go to the polygon side tab, thicken. Again, I have both sides enabled. So I can just thicken this. We'll do 20 millimeters. And again, I have to uh, delete these parts uh, that are at the, uh, the extremity on the boundary of that reference square, because otherwise it won't uh, weld. And if it doesn't weld, it won't be uh, seamless. So with the original elbow uh, selected, I'll just press shift tab to go into Catmull Clark mode, turn off our reference plane, deselect the elbow, and then I'll repipe the elbow into the replicator. And that's the effect that we're getting on the larger uh, grid. And again, by selecting the replicator, we can just change that seed and we'll get a totally different pattern. No matter which, uh, no matter which prototype we use, we'll just change that seed. Okay. So let's uh, let's go ahead and create uh, the uh, the actual texture. So I'll come over to the uh, sculpt and paint tab, and on the utility side tab, uh, we have geometry to brush. So if I click geometry to brush, uh, it's going to ask us what mode we want. We want to leave that at height field, uh, resolution. I think a 1K map. 1024 by 1024 is good. Uh, the projection axis, we want to make sure that axis is the same as uh, the viewport. Uh, so right now that's the Y, that's good. Iterations, uh, we can bump that up to 2000. And I'll just click OK. Uh, once I click OK, it's going to ask me if I want to save uh, an EXR. Uh, I'm going to save a PNG instead of an EXR. I just think that makes more sense for what we're doing. Um, and once I have that, I'll come back. OK, that actually failed. And the reason is because uh, it doesn't work with a replicator, so we do have to feed this into a merge meshes mesh app, or we have to uh, freeze the replicator. If you want to freeze the replicator, you just come over to the item with the replicator selected, and you come down to replicators, uh, freeze replicator. Uh, that's one way to do it. Now the other way, I'll just press N for new mesh item. I'll just name this uh, mop underscore merge, and then in this uh, new empty mesh item, I'll just add a merge meshes mesh app and the source will be our replicator. Uh, it's pretty great that we can use uh, replicators as sources in merge, uh, merge mesh mesh operations. The issue now is that if I go to the merge mesh mesh op and I double click some polygons, uh, you can see it's not vert welded. So every piece is separate. So what I need to do is above this merge mesh, I need to add another operator and we'll just do a, a vertex merge so here we have vertex merge. And in the vertex merge properties, I can just change this down to something low, like 100 unimeters. So 100 UM. And now, if I press 3 to go into polygons mode and double click one of these parts, uh, you can see it selects everything. So we have uh, each of these parts is totally vert welded, and it's still seamless. So let me actually try the elbow part. And I'll just double click this, and yep, it's all vert welded, which is what we want. OK, so let's try this again. I'll come over to, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if it'll actually work with uh, live procedural uh, meshes, but we'll, we'll try it. So with that uh, procedural mesh selected, I'll come over to geometry to brush, uh, keep everything the way I had it, and I'll click OK. Okay, so we're back, and uh, it worked. Uh, so we can use the geometry to brush command uh, with a live procedural item. Uh, this is the uh, bake that I got. Uh, so now if I come over to the images section and I add a clip, I'll just load an image from my desktop. So here is the loaded image. Uh, it's what we just baked. Uh, I'll just create a new mesh item by pressing N, and I'll hide everything else. And in this new mesh item, I'll just come over to the modeling tools, the create side tab, holding shift, I'll just uh, create
create a new plane. So I guess I didn't need to create that, that mesh. So here we have a plane. I'll just add a material to this. I'll just call this plane and I'll, I'll just make it gray. And then in the shader tree, in our plane uh, material, I'll just drag that new uh, true shape pattern. And it comes in as a diffuse color in the effects column, um, which is what we want. Um, so I could uh, expand the, uh, the texture layer so we can get to the texture locator here. And I can change the horizontal wrap and the vertical wrap to something like three. And we can see it is uh, tiling perfectly. Uh, and now we can change the effect from uh, diffuse color to uh, stencil. And we can invert that and go to our camera view and then fire off a preview render so we can see the stencil effect. So that's working. Uh, we can change the effect from stencil to bump. And if I go to the material associated with that material group, uh, the bump amplitude is five millimeters. I can change the displacement to five millimeters to match the bump and then change the effect from bump to displacement. And there's the effect we're getting. I can also invert this. And in options, I have draft displacements disabled, but if you want better uh, displacement results, you can come over to uh, the render item in the settings. You can lower the displacement rate. Uh, there are other uh, options you can uh, play with, but usually I, l I lower the uh, displacement rate settings uh, to get smoother displacements. And finally, I thought we would come into Photoshop uh, just to have a look at the uh, image that we baked. Uh, and if I come over to Filter, Other, Offset, uh, and I offset this by uh, 512 by 512, uh, you can see uh, that it indeed does tile perfectly. So uh, that was Truchet Tile Patterns in Moto. I hope that was helpful. Uh, stay tuned to Pixel Fondue for more tutorials. Thanks for watching. Yum, yum!